Hello everyone, this is an introduction to our studio. We're going to have kind of a fun little tour today. This is going to be relatively quick, and this is a, a first of several videos we're going to do on our and our studio. So we're going to look around our studio today, we're going to play with the console, we're going to figure out how to get help, talk about our projects, and take a quick tour of just a data set and see what we can get at our studio. So first thing you should do is you should pause this video when you're confused, when you have a question, or when you just want to play with some of the ideas. Go ahead and just launch our studio now, get it up on your screen behind this video, and put me on pause if you need to do anything. So here we go. Our studio is this environment that we're looking at here. The environment is what allows you to play with data sets, do statistics, do quick computations, look at the files that you're managing all in one place. Typically it's laid out in these four panes. Top left corner is going to be where your code is going to reside. Top right corner is where you're going to see information about the variables you have in memory. Bottom left corner is your console. Console's a nice beautiful little guy. I can do really quick simple computations like 1 plus 2 equals 3 or store a variable. My list is the list 1, 2, 3, 4. Now you notice that my list shows up in the environment and I can do things like mean of my list. The console allows you to do really quick one-off computations that you never really need to do again just to check your work, do things like that. If you want to clear the console, control L to get rid of it. If you want to go back up just use the up arrows and go back up or up or down. If I want to run the mean again, there it is. If I want to run the standard deviation of my list, I can do that. All of that's in the console. Bottom right hand corner is where you're going to see plots, where you're going to see files, where you're going to see different packages that you have loaded. Um, we'll get to packages in a different video. You can also get to your help here. So, let's, uh, let's clear out the console. Let's actually talk about how to get help. Help is going to be one of the biggest things you're going to need over and over and over again going through, these, um, through the, the learning process of R. So there's a beautiful um, menu here. If I just go up to the search bar and say I want standard deviation, help on standard deviation. I typed it in, press enter. It gives me all of my search results. It gives me lots of different things like, well, let's see, there's one of them, standard deviation. Here's how the function works. Here's things that go in. And there's some examples there too. So the help command here is really nice. You can also get to it a different way. If I go into the console down here in the bottom left, question mark. And if I know the command, question mark, SD, takes me to standard deviation, question mark, mean takes me to help for the mean. Um, Google is obviously a good place to go for help. You can always do that. R is open source and free, so you can go there and just get basically any help that you want. Here's a couple other cool features though. If you go to tools and keyboard shortcuts, there's all these keyboard shortcuts, which I encourage you to learn the keyboard shortcuts that you use more often than not. Things like control enter to run from a script or lots of other things that you can do in R. It's all here, so again that's under tools and keyboard shortcuts. One more thing that I find to be incredibly helpful in R Studio is if you go to the help command, oh and by the way I'm working on a Mac, so if my menus look a little bit different than yours, no big deal. So if I go to the help command, go to cheat sheets, there's all of these cheat sheets that you can download for all the different things that you might want to use in R. So for example, the R Studio Developer Environment cheat sheet. And now I've got this PDF document which I can blow up and it's got all the different things that you can do in R Studio, which is way too much for one video. Go ahead and download the cheat sheet. I'll let you do that. A big thing for us is that we're going to be working with our projects a lot. So in the top right hand corner, you'll see where it says new project. So I click the project button, click new project. A project is a folder that you're going to have on your computer 
that houses your R code, your data, and all of the analysis that you have for one particular problem. So I could think of every homework assignment would be a project. Every case study that we do would be a project. Maybe every chapter in the book would be a project. So I'm going to walk you through a building one. So I'm going to start a new directory. I'm going to do a new project. Now for me, I'm going to browse. I'm going to put this in my data science videos. And I'm going to call this Intro to our studio. Create project. Now it actually closes R for you and then we'll open it back up. And you'll notice in the top right hand corner it says Intro to our studio. So it actually tells me which project I'm working in. Now it also shows me down here under files. These are the files that are in that R project right now. So I'm going to open up my finder here. Again, I'm on a Mac. If you're on a Windows, it's going to look a little bit different. That's perfectly fine. I'm going to take some data and dump it into this project. So now I have a data set in here called the Tour de France data. And I've still got my console. It's still the same thing as what I had before. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to now import this data set, and then I'm going to start playing with it. So. Before I do that, our projects are just for organizing all your analysis, organizing your data, organizing all of the files that come along with doing statistical analysis. So I highly encourage you to use our projects as often as possible. So I'm going to import the data set. So hold on, I did that kind of fast. In the environment tab, import, and then from reader, that's usually where we're going to go. If you have an Excel file, you can do it from there. I encourage you not to use Excel files. Uh, they're just a little bit more heavy duty than we need. Reader is going to read a CSV file. I'm going to browse. Notice that it takes me right to the folder where my project is. I don't have to go hunting for my files. Open. And it gives me a preview of what this data set looks like. And furthermore, it gives me a bunch of code that I can copy. I'm going to import it. Shows me my data, that's perfectly fine. So I'm going to File, I'm going to do a new script, I'm going to paste that in here, right? And this is a way for me to actually just run my script where I can actually just grab, um, grab a data set, not have to go through all the mouse clicks. Now, we get to do a little bit more of a tour of our studio at this point. I now actually have a data set in here. So you notice that I've, I've read the data set in. I've named it as Tour de France rate year for whatever reason. I might just rename it as something like My Data. Control Enter is what's running that for me. And notice over here in my environments that I actually have the data sets. So I can use the broom to clean out my data sets. Okay, I can rerun this over here and it repopulates it for me. One nice command is I like to remove the list of all the things that are in memory with, the co with code instead of having to use the mouse. Okay, so let's poke around here a little bit. Just a little more poking around in our studio. When you have a data set in here, I can click on the data set and it takes me to a view of the data set and I can scroll through my data, I can see what everything, see what's going on, I can sort on various columns if I wanted to, I can expand, so now I'm just clicking the down arrow here, I can expand this and you can see all of the different variables that are inside your data set and it actually tells you what data type they are. So for example, there's integers, there's characters, there's numericals, there's all sorts of data kind of hanging out in this thing. So we can do several other things. We'll actually get into the rest of the things that our studio can do later. But for right now, this is a tour of what you can see and the sorts of things that you can do in our studio. We'll do more later.